Hello everyone. Today we are going to talk about semiotics. So what is semiotics? Semiotics is the study of signs and symbols. A sign is defined as something that stands for something else. So semiotics is basically a study which talks about these signs and symbols, what they are made of, how do you define them, what are the basic rules and laws. So let's say, for example, I want to signify a dog. Can you think of some ways in which I could do that? A, the simplest thing could be that I could just write D-O-G dog and you would understand that I am talking about a four-legged animal which is a dog. Or I could draw a picture of a dog. Or I could show you a photograph of my pet dog. Something else that I could do is that maybe I could act out what a dog acts like. Now signs can work for abstract concepts too, not just necessarily for physical objects or nouns. For example, if I want to signify an emotion like anger, I can use words, written words, verbal words. I could send you an emoticon on WhatsApp. Sometimes it can be unintentional also. For example, your facial expressions, rolling of your fists can also signify that you are angry. Sometimes it could be intentional too. I could punch you in your face. That would not only signify that you are angry, it would also signify how angry you are. So the thing with these signs is that you are able to describe something like a feeling without having to make the samne wala person feel the same thing, you know. Now there are also, there can be signs from nature. So let's say if you see smoke arising, uh, rising up from a forest, it would be a pretty good sign that there is a fire somewhere. If you step out of home in the morning and you see puddles on the road, it's a clear, pretty clear sign that has been raining the night before. So now, let's look at the big daddy of semiotics. This person is Ferdinand de Saussure. He was a linguist. His works were actually published posthumously in 1916. Now he, like I said, he was a linguist and he studied languages. And what he said was that language is actually a system of signs. So it should be studied as a part of semiotics. Like we said, semiotics is a study of signs and symbols. And he said that language is also a sign. So why is it linguistic? Why isn't linguistic being studied as a part of semiotics? So what he said was that language has two components, the lang and the parole. Now the lang is basically the collection of all the possible signs and rules in language. So all your spellings, all the words, all your verbs, nouns, proverbs, adjectives, they are all, the collection of all of these together is the lang. This is what is shared by a community. So all English speaking people know all of these uh, rules. Now parole is the use of the language to create meaning. So any individual act of speech or writing is the parole. Now, how does he take this forward to talk about signs? He says that any sign has two components, the signifier and the signified. Now the signifier is the thing that does the standing in for something else. And the signified is the thing or the idea that the communicator is trying to evoke. So the word A-P-P-L-E apple is the signifier and the actual apple or the concept of the apple is the signified. Like I said, this might seem very pedantic or too detailed and it might look a lot like nitpicking. But let's look at why this is important. So, remember that he was a linguist. He was concerned about the arbitrariness of this relationship. He says that the only reason that the signifier means the signified concept is because we as a society have decided it. Now, the word D-O-G, dog, it doesn't mean anything. It doesn't have any natural linkage to the concept of the animal dog. But the reason why we understand that the word D-O-G, dog, means that four-legged animal is because as a society we have decided it. Now, if you go to America and there you are telling someone that I have a pet dog and if you say, Mere paas ek kutta hai, he will not understand. Because language is, is defined by the people who are speaking that language. So, as a society we have decided the rules of this language. Now let's see how we can use these concepts in marketing. A person called Roland Barthes takes Saussure's work a notch further. He talks about various levels of meanings. 
So he says that suppose there is a signifier, it has its literal meaning which is the denotation and then it has some further meanings which are the connotations. So for example, if you have the word rose, R-O-S-E, literally it would signify the flower rose. But if you look at its cultural associations and assumptions, that flower rose could also signify passion. So in marketing and advertising and branding, we often use these connotations to explain things about our brand. Let's look at some brand logos. This image of the crown does not just mean crown. It means it signifies or, con it, or gives connotations of luxury and royalty. If you look at the bird dove over there, it signifies peace, purity, maybe virginity. A lot of uh, car companies use animal symbols like jaguar, which could signify speed and power. Uh, if you look at the lion here in Chennai Super Kings, it could signify power, strength. Uh, the lion is the king of the jungle. So that kind of, so the name Chennai Super Kings also has associations with the lion. So for the moment, this is all I'm going to talk about. In my next video, I'm going to talk about different types of signs. So right now, what we did was very simplistic, just understanding what signs mean and where they come from. And now we're going to look at it further. So please do join me for my next video. I hope you liked what we did today. Thanks for joining.